We have an update on Connor Garland's surprise injury that had him miss Friday's final preseason game. And Patrick Alvine makes another roster cut that means big opportunities ahead for two young prospects making a splash during the preseason. We're going to be breaking down all of that in this episode of Canucks Digest, but first make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss any and all updates surrounding the Canucks as we head into the regular season. And with that, let's hop in the first topic of the day, which is Connor Garland injury report. Now, if you guys were watching the game last night, you would see that Connor Garland was a last minute scratch for from the roster, Niels Almond jumped in with him. It led to some adjustments made where Sherwood was moved up and Hoglander as well playing with Ratu. And then you had Almond, Bluger, and Baines on that final fourth line. And then, of course, it was going to lead to questions after the game and talk. It was more than happy to answer him. And he told reporters that Connor Garland tweaked something in the morning and was a late scratch for the team. If it was a regular season or playoff game, Garland likely would have played. But because it was the preseason, Talkett did not want to miss anything. And it was also followed up on today's practice this morning and at the University of British Columbia. It was a short 35-minute practice. As he was Friday night, Gar Connor Garland was once again absent. The veteran winger is nursing a minor undisclosed injury and is considered day-to-day. -day. Rick Tockett suggested that Garland could skate as early as tomorrow, although the coach wouldn't commit to having Garland available for Sunday's practice. Everything with Garland is about ensuring he's ready for Wednesday's regular season opener against Calgary. And this is also something that... It, injuries seem to be the just talk of men of the Vancouver Canucks this season. It seems to be everything he seems to be happening and the season hasn't even started yet. We've had all these injuries pop up. Pius Suter, Dakota Joshua, Thatcher Demko, of course, now Connor Garland, but we have some optimistic news as far as, as far as Connor Garland goes, where he is day to day and as well as Pew Suter. And speaking of Pew Suter, we do have a little update on him. While Garland was missing, Suter was back on the ice with the main group Saturday in a red non-contact jersey after suffering the upper body injury on Monday night in Edmonton. Suter skated on his own prior to Friday morning skate, and today was involved throughout practice with his teammates. So again, two injuries that came up late in the preseason, and it is nice that they are not going to be as serious as it initially indicated, especially with Pew Suter, where it seemed like it was going to be a bit more of a serious one than intended. And then eventually when the reports came out, it was not as serious as it initially was. But for Garland and Suter to be trending towards playing in the regular season, that's obviously great news. We know all the LTIR and the IR complications that Vancouver is trying to avoid and deal with right now, especially with Thatcher Demko's situation being what it is and the cap hit that he has as well. So there's going to be interesting moves as far as what they're going to do there. But when looking at the practice lines as well, you have Heinen, Miller, and Besser, DeBrusque, Petey, and Sprong. That seems to be a second line that isn't going to be changing very much. Then you got Hoglander, Ratu, and Sherwood. Then you have Baines, Bluger, and Amon. Then Suter was the non-contact. And as well as the defensive core, seemingly being set with Hughes, Heronik, Susie Myers, Forbort, and Dernay, and Friedman and Juleson. So Vancouver's going into this season opener against Calgary looking fairly strong. Again, with all the injuries we have considering, this is a solid lineup. This is a lineup where I can feel comfortable heading into the first few games of the season with just making sure that guys are able to be healthy and they're not being rushed back before they are ready. It's going to be interesting to see what Vancouver does eventually go with. We know there's a lot of moves that they're going to be making as far as just sending guys down to the uh, AHL back to Abbotsford or keeping them on the final roster for opening night. It's going to be interesting to see what they do ahead of that. There is going to be a bit more later on in this video as far as a little bit of a hint as to what Vancouver could be doing. But what do you guys think about the Connor Garland situation? Are you guys, are you, of course, everyone's happy that it's not as serious as it initially seemed. And it is something that he's going to be able to power through and he's going to be fine for opening night. We have a few days rest before that happens. So he's going to be able to get back to normal and as well as Pia Suter. What do you guys think about that as far as are you comfortable with him sitting out the first few games if he is not ready love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments down below but that's going to take us into the second topic of the day which is Akito Heroes to Abbotsford and we see here in a tweet on Saturday afternoon that Vancouver Canucks general manager Patrick Alvin announced today that Akito Heroes has been signed to Abbotsford and when looking at his journey as well, the 25-year-old six-foot left shot defenseman is entering the second year of a two-year 787.5 average contract he signed with the Canucks at the end of the 2023 season. He went on undrafted after spending three years at Minnesota State University and made his NHL debut in 2023, appearing in seven games for Vancouver, recording three assists. However, injuries have hampered his career in the organization since then. After jumping from the NHL to the, uh, to the from the NCAA to the NHL, we saw that he got those concussion during this year's camp kept him from properly showcasing 
his improvements. And as well with uh, as well as with the concussion, when a player is injured during the preseason while on an NHL roster, they cannot be sent down to the minors until their injury status is cleared. Vancouver had to wait for his recovery before officially assigning him to Abbotsford. He skated in Friday in Friday morning skate, meaning he was cleared from con- concussion protocol. So they were able to make the move back down to Abbotsford. And with this move as well, Vancouver's defensive lineup appears solidified. The core six consists of Quinn Hughes, Phil Peronic, Tyler Myers, Carson Soucy, and Derek Forbert with Vinny Dayarnay, as well as Noah Juleson with Mark Friedman vying for the seventh spot. He was not expected to make the final roster, so his reassignment isn't surprising. It likely would have happened sooner if not for his injury. And this seemed like something of a for now, of a formality that Vancouver was trying to do as well as just making sure that they were doing it by the book, not violating any rules. We don't want to get in any trouble as far as when we see that we play by the rules, we even still get in trouble from the NHL when teams like Vegas seem to just bend the rules and they get away with it just because Gary Bettman seems to give them a pass. Not going to not gonna go into that whole can of worms, but we know that the Canucks do have a habit of getting in trouble even when they do go by the book. So making sure that they were just doing the right due diligence on this process making sure that they were doing everything right it's just a formality at this point that they just had to send him back down to Abbotsford but he will be going back to Manny Malhotra and playing with a young Abbotsford team that is looking to make an impression on the AHL we hear a lot of smack about how Vancouver's prospect pool isn't as strong as other teams when when we've seen how these guys have played in the preseason they've been arguing that statement very much so and two guys especially have been Atu Ratu and Arshdeep Baines starting the season with the big club it seems very likely with Dakota Joshua and Pew Suter sideline with injuries the door was open for them to make it with the Canucks and their performances were convincing enough in the preseason we saw Baines get that goal last night against uh in that final preseason game against the Oilers so Baines is looking like he's going to be making this roster along with Atu Ratu while Joshua and Suter are sidelined for just a little bit longer. I'm okay with that insurance policy. I think Ratu is developing into a great player for this Vancouver team and he is coming into this season hungry and ready to prove that he belongs on this team as well as Archdeep Baines. There's been a lot of comments saying things about Baines, how we shouldn't have him on the team anymore. Ship him out and get what you can for him. He is proving otherwise with that with just how well he's played in this preseason and the things that he's shown not only in Abbotsford but in the little opportunities he's gotten with Vancouver. I think he's going to be making a bigger splash this season in the games that he's going to be afforded. We know it's going to be competitive with this forward group. Yes, we know the top six is pretty much set and it's going to be hard for even P.U. Suter to splash into that top six. So these guys are definitely going to have to make a case for themselves as far as the bottom six guys go. But I think they're going to get those opportunities in those games. It's a long season. It's 82 games. Those can go by very quickly, I know, but it can wear on some guys. And when you have guys that are ready to make that jump to the NHL level, and can jump into those plug-and-play situations. I think Baines and Ratu are great insurance policies and safety valves to rely on in those situations. But what do you guys think down in the comments below? What do you guys think about these prospects filling in those roles? What do you think about Heros going down to Abbotsford? Love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments, but that's going to take us into our third topic of the day, which is everyone's favorite topic, and that is comment of the day. And we see here from Seriously Unserious that it's great to see Pius is not badly injured. Really looking forward to seeing him slot into a bottom six role that he's best suited for, seeing him sell at the top six where his talent isn't a good fit he did the best he could on our top line we were short top line forwards that is a very good take he was great in those replacement roles but now it's time to see where he shines best on the third or fourth line as a checker who can chip in with a bit of offense here and there that's it the guys we got don't take over the roster and leave nowhere for him to fit in which is entirely possible too and we just mentioned that with these prospects and let alone for Pew Suter himself where he's going to be in this sweet spot on that third or fourth line we saw him get that clutch goal in the playoffs where he clinched our ticket to play Edmonton in the second round so yes he's one of those guys who's on the third and fourth line but he can make those impact goals like we said in our last video but what do you guys think down below let us know what you guys think about this episode about Vancouver heading into this season we're finally on the cusp of the regular season we finally got through the offseason we're through the preseason now it's on to the regular season can't wait to bring you guys all the updates and all the game post game reactions and all the fireworks that go on during the season it's going to be a great season can't wait to bring it all to you guys but that's going to do it for this episode leave a like comment subscribe share with your friends let us know how we did but that's going to do it for this this episode i've been your host griffin take care